In this video, we talk about harvesting dynamic risk premium. The empirical finance literature has identified numerous dynamic risk premium strategies. That video provides you with a short overview for four such strategies. These are value, carry, momentum, and volatility. So let's talk about value. Over the past decades, value stocks, so these are stocks with strong fundamentals relative to their market price, have on average outperformed growth stocks. Different investors use different metrics to measure the firm's fundamental strength. Typical measures are book value, past dividends, expected future dividends, earnings, or expected earnings. More current research has also shown that the value premium is not a US-only phenomenon, but rather a global phenomenon that holds across asset classes. Also note, there have been periods where val value strongly underperforms growth. So essentially, a value strategy buys cheap assets relative to fundamentals and sells expensive ones. There is also some evidence that controlling for industry sectors results in higher risk-adjusted returns for value strategies. Looking at the ability to time the value premium, most evidence concludes it's not easier than to time the market. This implies that investors should focus on holding well-diversified value portfolios. And here it's interesting to note that the value premium correlates negatively with the momentum premium. So from a diversification point of view, any value portfolio should contain some momentum exposure. So there are different economic theories to rationalize the value premium. One set of theories argues that the value premium is the result of behavioral biases. Investors extrapolate multi-year growth rates of growth stocks too optimistically into the future. Hence, these overly optimistic priced-in growth expectations will later be met by lower realized growth. That implies that today's high prices for growth firms will go along with disappointing future returns. Similarly, Value stocks are stocks with low prices relative to fundamentals. Such firms might be out of fashion or their priced in distress risk might be exaggerated, implying that their future realized fundamentals are better than the priced in expectations. Another strand of the literature argues the value premium is based on value having more systematic risk than growth firms. That literature links the value premium to stressful times for the investor, such as disappointing returns when liquidity dries up, higher reinvestment risk of dividends due to their relatively low duration, or a relative underperformance during recessions. These theories need to address the challenge that value firms tend to have lower betas than growth firms and an overall similar return pattern during recessions. Now I've mentioned that momentum is a good diversifier for value risk. So what is a momentum strategy? Momentum strategies buy recent winners and sell recent losers. Such a strategy has performed well on a single stock basis and across several asset markets. Momentum strategies on a single stock are also called trend following strategy. One prominent economic explanation for the momentum premium is again based on behavioral biases. Investors might underreact to incoming fundamental news. This leads to a gradual price adjustment instead of a single price jump. 
The reason for underreaction could be a strong personal prior which gets only marginally updated by new information. Last not least, momentum is a trading intensive strategy with subsequently large transaction costs. Another popular dynamic risk premium strategy is carry, in particular currency carry. In fact, over the past 50 years, buying high yielding currency and shorting low yielding currency has been a profitable trade. Standard macro theory postulates that any yield differential across currencies should be offset by future currency depreciation. But in practice, the opposite has happened on average, namely high yielding currencies appreciated and hence became even more lucrative for the early movers. Carry trades paid high sharp ratios within G10 countries and performed even better with emerging market countries. A major setback happened during the financial crisis. That experience showed that the carry premium is an escalator strategy. One collects premiums over time with a sharp and sudden downward reversal. The carry premium does therefore contain substantial negative skewness risk. In addition, these crashes happen at a time when the world market is under severe stress. Going short carry does therefore provide an insurance against crash risk in the world market. And the magnitude of the resulting insurance premium has been sizable. Now, the dynamic strategy of selling volatility is also considered an escalator strategy that collects premiums in good times and faces tremendous losses during market turmoil. Selling volatility can be translated into riding put and call options. The buyer of volatility gets compensated in times of market stress. As volatility shoots up, and the value of the option increases. On the other hand, the seller of an option earns a steady income stream when volatility is unchanged or falling, whereas he has to withstand these severe losses if volatility shoots up. Note that, very roughly speaking, the realized volatility in the stock market is roughly 2 to 4% lower than the priced in expected volatility in the option market. Now that spread between realized volatility and priced in volatility can be interpreted as a volatility risk premium. That premium is negative as the average investor likes to hold an option to protect his wealth from unexpected crashes. He is therefore willing to pay for such an insurance, which coincides with the risk premium for the seller of volatility. Now interestingly, the spread between realized variance in the stock market and the priced and expected variance in the option market appears to be close to zero for single stock options. In contrast, for index options, such a spread is sizable, giving rise to the notion that the variance risk premium is in fact a correlation risk premium. A trading strategy that goes directly after the correlation risk premium is a strategy that sells an option on the index and buys single stock options of all constituents.